All right, Gen 3 Truck LS Drive-By Wire Systems. So there's three generations of Gen 3 Drive-By Wire. That's what we'll call them. So the first one is this style. And so these came on mostly 2001, 2002, uh, like Tahoe's, Suburbans, Escalades, but they could come on other things. I'm not sure if I've ever seen one on a Silverado, but this is, calls the first generation. This uses the blue-red connector computers. So that is the 99 to 02 style. Then this with the flatter pancake is the 03 to 07. Now within the 03 to 07, there's two generations of that one. So I'll write all this down in a minute. This is just the overview of the components. So you've got your throttle body, you've got your throttle actuator control module or tack module, and you have your gas pedal. Now between the three generations, not everything is interchangeable. So the way this system basically works, on your gas pedal, you have a servo. So a servo is basically just a, think of it like a potentiometer or any type of a, like a rotary switch on a light in your house where you just turn it and it has a certain voltage. So when you press the gas pedal, it turns that servo just a little bit. There's not much movement there. So then that signal goes to the TAC module, which converts that signal into an angle for the throttle plate. So if you listen, you can hear the servo turning inside this when I do it by hand. So there's a degree of movement in this, which this calculates into a degree of movement in this. So like that would be 90 degrees which is wide open throttle, and that would be about, you can see the angle right in here. So that's nothing, and that's wide open throttle. So that's probably about 10 degrees. So whatever calculation the TAC module does, that's what you get. So that's the basic overview of the components. All right, now I'll break it all down in writing. So you have your first generation, your second, and your third. So those are basically three generations. So the first one, all the components are different. It has its own throttle body, it has its own tack module, and it has its own gas pedal. The second generation, there's a little bit of interchangeability in these. So the important thing, if you have a second gen one, is the tack module part number. So right up here is the part number. This one's 12573059, which is pretty much the most common second generation type one that I've seen. O six and O seven, the most common one, is one two five nine zero 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 eight, I believe. I might have one or two numbers missing, but it ends in a zero 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 eight. So this usually tells you that you've got the second generation. This was in the trucks, the Silverado, Tahoes, and things. Then there's a subset of this. It's one two five nine. 0009, and this is the vans from only 2007 that I've seen. So where this comes into play is you need to match. On this one, you need to have all your components from 2002 or earlier, including your computer. The, com the computer in this one, needs the tech module number needs to match the operating system in the computer. So you have to match the PCM. The reason that's important is if you have this part number, but you have a computer that's programmed for this part number, it will not work. You will get TAC module, like your, your throttle won't move. You'll get uh, TAC module fault codes, not interchangeable between these two.
I wrote PCM, but that's actually wrong. PCM is interchangeable. The operating system in the PCM is not interchangeable. So I hope this doesn't confuse anybody more. Basically, you'll either have a first gen, which is this guy, and there's only one type of all that. If you have the second, third, or we'll call it the third subset, which has this pancake style, then the most important thing is look at your TAC module, look at that number, and match it. And if none of this makes sense and you're not sure exactly what you have, take your part numbers and go on Rock Auto and put in just the years of the third gen trucks, and it'll actually show you these TAC module numbers and which one goes with which year. So hopefully that doesn't make everything more, more confusing than it already is. All right. Here's the two gas pedals. I've got the full-size truck Gen 3 one and the S10. So as far as height goes, from the screws, we'll call it from the screws to the pedal, it's actually pretty close. So my biggest difference is from the firewall out, I mean the truck's got it, full-size truck has a lot more room obviously, so they took advantage of that, where the S10 is pretty tight, it's about four inches. So this whole assembly moves together, all this whole arm. And I think this was ABS, I can't remember what these do, but I'm sure somebody will tell me what they do. So what my plan is, is to cut this, remove this, drill that out, and then take this piece and just move it over and weld it right on. And that'll give me all the clearance I should need. So that is what we're gonna do. And by doing that, I should be able to maintain the relationship between the pedal itself and the pivot up here on the servo. So I don't have that touchy gas pedal I talked about. I move this, I'm just gonna throw some quick alignment marks on here. That'll just kind of set my height. Not too critical, but it'll give me somewhat of a reference. The easiest way to move these is just to grind them off with kind of like a hardened steel rivet. All right, so I've got all that removed. If we line up my witness marks, it's gonna put me right about there. So, 
So what I'm going to do is cut it right along this bend, remove all this, and then I should be able to lay this flat on there. I'm also going to cut, and I will cut it right about here. Cut that, cut that, I should be in a good spot to weld it back together. All right, I got everything chopped off. Chop that, chop that. And about the cutoffs should line up with each other about like that. Sort of like that, right there. So I'm gonna crawl up under the dash. Double check this, there shouldn't be any clearance issues now, but just in case. So I'll check that and then I'll pull it back out. All right, I crawled up under there. Most everything fits, but one thing I noticed while I was checking it was, if you notice on the stock pedal, it's offset to the left, which would be the driver's side of the vehicle. If you go straight down from the bolt hole. But on this one, the pedal is offset to the right. The reason that matters is this section right here was just barely touching the vent and heater box plastic area, which you could probably trim, but all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this hole over one inch. So I'll make like an adapter plate that this bolts to that bolts to the stock holes in the firewall. So it'll be kind of like that, if that makes sense. And I won't have any clearance problems. It'll be easy to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack this on and then make that adapter plate. Here's my little adapter plate I'm going with. So all it is is about a 3 16th plate. And then I took my stock pedal, stuck it on there, marked the three holes, drilled them, offset them to where I can weld this on about an inch over. And then I'll back drill that third hole. And then I will tack the pedal on like that. And once I just, I'm just going to tack this one and then I'm going to sit, I'm going to bolt this to the firewall, sit in the car and see where if this needs to be adjusted like uh, this direction at all or up or down or wherever. So I'll get that welded together and do a test fit. Okay, I got the pedal mocked up into its final position intact. It is below flush with the brake pedal, how it basically should be stock. It's in a comfortable position. It bottoms out right before it hits the floor, so it actually doesn't hit the carpeting. So, has a very comfortable spot for it. I should have measured the stock one before I did this, but something to compare it to. I've got the angle the same as the trans tunnel there, so everything pretty much looks stock. So here's an under dash shot. Kind of fits up in there. You can see my little offset bracket to the right. I've got to drill and add that third hole, but I want to take a minute. You can see when I push the pedal down, it comes close to the floor, but that's it bottomed out. You see the carpet's not compressed, so it's definitely bottoming out on the bracket in the pedal assembly itself up there. Right there. So that's where we're going to keep it. I'm going to finish weld that up and bolt this in for the paint it and then bolt it in for the last time dude what what do you want what do you want why are you always harassing me huh why are you harassing me it's because i'm in your bedroom is this where you sleep at night what are you going to do once this truck's done and you can't sleep in it anymore huh what are you going to do Here's kind of a quick little drawing if you wanted to just exactly copy the dimensions of this. And I would tack everything together and test it on your vehicle, but this should work on any second gen S10. So basically if you lay this square to the cardboard, yeah, it's hard to get a camera shot, but pretend it's square up there like that. So this back edge of whatever your plate is, is this line right here. So these represent where the bolt holes are like this. 
So that, because that's a common point that we're all going to be using, and that's in line with my bolt hole. And it is offset basically one inch. So you're going to have to go one inch to the driver's side and offset this. So once that's done, the distance from the back edge of your plate to the back edge of the farthest point of the pedal, one and a half inches. That'll make sure you bottom out on the stop here and not on the floor. From that bolt hole down, go five inches and draw a 90 degree. This is just 90 degrees. Line straight over, and that'll intersect the pivot point on the pedal right there, that pin. Seven inches over, five inches down from that bolt hole. So that should get you in the ballpark where you need to be. So, should help you out. And then, as far as this angle to get kind of in line with the trans tunnel like I showed you, or parallel to it, it's not really a, too much of a specific angle. I just kind of spaced it and tacked it. I'm going to grind all this down and burn it in pretty solid. So that is it. Up here, I'll show you that. I rested the stock part right on that. Uh, it's the spring pivot that's pressed in there. See, it's pressed in. So that'll kind of give you a, a solid point and then just adjust it until you're one and a half inches from there to there. Here's the gas pedal ready to be installed. Welded it all up, threw some paint on it. It's all set, so we'll go ahead and bolt this in. There we are all bolted in. check make sure we're not bottoming out on the floor which we're not it's on the bracket and that's it gas pedal all set